if you were to come to me and ask me, Kyle, why can Hamzat Chemaev beat Paolo Costa at UFC 294? Why is he the favourite? I think most people would be able to list those things off. His wrestling, of course, being the main thing. The fact that he is undefeated in his career. Um, all of these aspects that make him a favourite in the fight. However, if you were to say, let's play devil's advocate and argue for Paolo Costa, what would you say? How can he win this fight despite being the underdog? The secret jewels. And that is what the point of this series is. This is Devil's Advocate. Um, and we're going to dive into this huge middleweight co-main event happening at UFC 294, October 21st in Abu Dhabi. Um, Paolo Costa is a strange fighter to talk about. You never really know what you're going to get with Paolo Costa. Some of his best performances and best wins even have asterisks over them. Some of his biggest losses have huge question marks about his commitment as a fighter um, and his real skill level. And I think that is where the underdog status for this fight against Chumayev comes from. Um... We have seen Chumayev dominate opponents, and we've seen Paolo Costa do the same on his way up the middleweight ladder, but it's fair to say it hasn't been uh, as seamless a transition from the run that made him into a star compared to the elite level opposition that he's faced, unlike Chumayev, who, um, of course, had that war with Gilbert Burns, but... Um, came through it and answered a lot of questions. I think with Paolo Costa, we still have a lot of questions that need to be answered. Um, and that comes from his record. Let's start there. So in his last few fights, of course, he had that, that run of dominant victories in the UFC, beating Johnny Hendricks, the fight that is um, one of the most uh, unfair matchups that I think the UFC have put together in some time. And of course, you have him beating Uriah Hall, another one that felt a little bit like, okay, we get it, Paolo Costa is exciting, and yet we want to see him at the top of the middleweight ladder. Um, and obviously that all came to a head with the fight against Joel Romero, which I think is, is that his best win? That is his best win, I would say. Um, we'll get to that. But a incredibly courageous performance against Joel Romero to bring the fight to a guy like Yoel that nobody else does and of course it ended up being an absolute banger of a fight where both men got dropped and it was incredible and then he goes in there against Israel Adesanya and gets absolutely outclassed we don't really need to talk about that fight um it, it's a completely different fight to the one that he has coming up against Chemaev just because of how different Izzy is to Chemaev um and then we have the Marvin Vittori one. And I watched this fight back in preparation for this because I just remember the whole thing being very strange. And it, it still is when you go back and watch it. Um, Costa appears to get tired very early on. That could be down to the issues with his weight that ended up with this fight being at light heavyweight. I believe that was changed on the week of the fight. So it was all very bizarre. Um, and... There are some things you can take from that fight that are, are positives towards Paolo Costa, I think. But there are also a lot of things that mm, give a lot of questions over him as an elite competitor in the UFC. He, of course, then rebounds by beating Luke Rockhold in another really strange fight. I can, will still say to this day, I don't know if I've ever seen somebody as tired in the octagon as Luke Rockhold was in that fight. I mean, it was up there for sure. Um, and it was still a competitive fight. Luke Rockhold fought quite well, actually, despite being absolutely gassed and having his hands on his knees by the end of the first round. But um, So I find it really difficult to take things positive uh, about Paolo Costa in that fight because it was so strange. Um, but we are going to do that. Um, first thing to point out, I think, in this fight is middleweight experience. Now, again... The point of this series, Devil's Advocate, is to, to pick at the things which you can argue go in Paolo Costa's favour. Do I think that Paolo Costa's experience as a middleweight is going to be a defining factor in this fight? Maybe not, but it is a factor worth considering that points towards Paolo Costa having a chance of winning. Um, the fact of the matter is, we haven't seen Shumayev tested at middleweight yet. We have seen him tested at welterweight because of the Gilbert Burns fight where he proved that he can take a shot, he can rally to win a fight when it's up in the air, um, and he can strike 
um, we kind of knew that already, but maybe not so much. Um, we knew he was accurate and he had power. We now know that he can hang in there and trade and things like that. But we haven't seen him tested up at middleweight, really. You look at his middleweight wins and we haven't seen anyone have any opposition. He, of course, knocked out Gerald Mearshart with, I think, the first punch that he threw in that fight. Um, and the other middleweight contest would have been John Phillips, which would have been his debut, I believe. Was it? Yeah, and then Reese McKee down at welterweight. So we really haven't seen him test up at this weight class. We have seen images that make it look like Chumaev is a middleweight, for sure. We will wait to see how that comes out because the one thing we know about Paolo Costa is that he is a big dude. What the fuck? Um, and he always looks massive on fight night. So that is an interesting thing, I think, um, that we will find out closer to fight week, how that actually levels out. But Chumayev's lack of a test at middleweight. Paolo Costa has been in there with Adesanya. He's been in there with Vittori. He's been in there with Yo Romero. We know that he belongs in and around that mix. Um... And the most obvious reason that he belongs in that mix is his athleticism, I think. His power. And despite the fact that he got tired, he gets tired in a few fights, um, he seems to... I don't know. He just pushes past it. I think his, he is such a freak athlete that even when he is tired, he still has enough to, to, to keep... Like, the Vittori fight, he was gassed after the first round, and yet, you know, the, the fight was competitive for a lot of that fight. Um... He has a very good chin, and so does Marvin Vittori, obviously. Um, otherwise, that fight might have uh, been a finish, but both those guys are incredibly durable. Um, and, and that's an interesting part of it as well, is the athleticism of Paolo Costa. Because Chimaev has been able to... A lot of his takedowns, of course, he's a fantastic wrestler, but his explosiveness and his athleticism is a lot of the time what allows him to close the distance so easily on some of these guys. And he struggled with that against Gilbert Burns. I think partly because Burns is a phenomenal grappler, but also because he was the shorter guy and he's such a stocky build, um, Gilbert Burns. Paolo Costa is stocky in a different way he's huge but he is very like his shoulders are massive um and so that'll be interesting to see how Chumayev deals with the athleticism of Paolo Costa and just the natural size of him again we will find out how that size difference actually measures up when we see them on fight week standing next to each other um another thing that I think we learned from the Gilbert Burns fight about Chumayev is his playfulness um, we've seen him, you know, pick up Li Jing Liang and carry him across the octagon so that he's in front of Dana. Um, but the, the Gilbert Burns fight, his corner was screaming at him to shoot a takedown. They were clearly frustrated with him after the fight for not listening. We know that Chimaev wants to put on a show to some extent. Paolo Costa does this as well. I remember from watching the Luke Rockhold fight, he takes about four body kicks in a row. And the fourth one he takes because he's telling Luke Rockhold to hit him in the body again. Um, <laughs> of course, the the Yol Romero fight was filled with stuff like that as well. Um, of course, he was on the opposite end of it when Yol Romero pointed the wrong way and then dropped him, which is still one of the best moments in UFC history, if you ask me. But we know that Chumayev likes to get drawn into a brawl. He did it against Gilbert Burns, and I think doing it against Paolo Costa will be interesting. I think that Chumayev is a very accurate striker, but Paolo Costa's biggest strength is his striking and his athleticism. We've seen Chumayev can take a hell of a shot, so can Paolo Costa. I think that a brawl between them is probably, if you were going to argue for Paolo Costa winning this fight, that is how he wins most likely, is if Chumayev chooses to turn this into a striking contest, whether it's because he can't take Costa down or whether he just because he wants to do it for his ego to prove that he can hang with the most powerful guys up at middleweight. The Yo Romero win is a perfect example uh, of why Paolo Costa will be happy to do that. He went in and traded with Yo Romero, who, uh, I mean, Robert Whittaker is the only other person I can think of that did that, and he had to go through hell in those two fights, the second fight especially, like, uh, who knows how much that impacted Robert Whittaker's career, but you'd be crazy to say that it didn't in some facet, I know that he, of course, uh, has put together some incredible wins since then, but that fight takes years off your life, there's no way it doesn't. Paolo Costa 
is not the kind of person that gets intimidated. Against Izzy, he froze. I think that's a different... I don't think he was intimidated by Adesanya, but he just didn't know what to do. And Shemaev, of course, is not the kind of striker that Israel Adesanya is who's going to set traps and, and, and be elusive. If Paulo Costa and Shemaev are going to have a striking contest, it's probably going to be them throwing bombs at each other. Um, because I haven't really seen a... Chimaev is very good at making reads and things like that, but you you know you haven't seen him set people up, uh, and you know Izzy kind of stuff, right? You're not expecting that in this fight, and so I don't think that'll be an issue for Paulo Costa in this fight. And he can go to war. We've seen it happen, and I think that is the best route for Paulo Costa in this fight against Luke Rockhold. He kind of tried to fight more technically for a while. Um, I think he probably could have finished Rockhold if he was a bit more um, throwing caution to the wind. But maybe after, you know, back-to-back -back losses, Izzy, he got destroyed and dismantled throughout that fight. And then Marvin Vittori, um, he was maybe a little bit too reckless at points. And um, so he tried to fight more calculated against Luke Rockhold, which um, was an interesting take because I think a lot of people would have predicted him to try and blitz Luke Rockhold and really test him in the opening round. Uh, and he didn't. He took him down and controlled him for the majority of the round and, and won the round on the scorecard. He won all three rounds on the scorecards. But I don't... I, I think that Paolo Costa going technique for technique with Chimaev is maybe not the best idea. And if he can do a similar thing to Gilbert Burns and get Chimaev into a place where he feels like he needs to show that he can hang with these guys in a war, that is his route to victory. Um, as is always the case with these Devil's Advocate videos, I am not saying that that is my prediction for the fight. That is not the point. It is to give you reasons why he can pull off this this underdog upset um, and what an upset it would be if Paolo Costa is able to hand Hamzat Shemaev the first loss of his career. That would be quite something. Um, be interesting to see what happens in the middleweight title picture if that does happen. Could we see Paolo Costa versus Sean Strickland, which is a fight that I would be very interested in um but who knows we will see let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this fight paulo costa versus hamzat chemaev uh we will also be dropping a video for charles Oliveira versus islam makachev 2 which of course is your main event for usd 294 and enjoy the fights and i'll see you on the next one